this is Vicki Robinson and today I'd like to show you how you can attach a digital paper clip to another element on your page. Uh, maybe it's a frame uh, like I have in this case or a ribbon or something. In real life when you would take this paper clip here, when you attach it to an element, if you were to attach it to a piece of paper, you'll notice that only part of the paper clip is going to show and that's what we're going to accomplish. Now if you have trouble visualizing this, I suggest you just get out a paper clip and attach it to a piece of paper. It doesn't matter whether you have the longer part showing or the shorter part showing, the principle would still be the same. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well let's go ahead and add my drop shadow to my paper clip. I'm going to click on the effects panel here and let's add this shadow and that's way too big so let's come in here let me just reduce this opacity a little bit and this size okay that's about right now because the technique I'm going to be showing you is destructive meaning I'm actually going to be erasing pixels of my paper clip I'm going to make a, another copy of the paper clip just in case I mess up and need to start over and an easy way to do that is to select my paper clip layer and then control or command J to duplicate the layer and then I'm just going to hide the copy now I'm going to move my paper clip into place Let's put it about here. Let's make this bigger so you can see. Move it down to right about there. Now, as I said, I'm going to hide this portion of the paper clip that's right here. To do that, I'm going to make sure my paper clip layer is selected is and then I'm going to control or command click on a thumbnail image of whatever it is I'm going to be clipping to. In my case it's this photo frame. That will give me the marching ants around my photo frame. Now making sure I'm still on my clip layer I'm going to get out my eraser tool. I'm going to choose a hard round brush. Start with a number nine and see if that's the right size. Yeah that's about right for here. Now I'm going to start to erase the paper clip where I don't want it to appear, where it would be behind my photo. Now the reason for the marching ants you'll see is that I cannot erase anything outside those marching ants. So I actually can't erase up here, but I can erase in a straight line right up here at the top where the paper clip is um, attached to my photo. And then maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let me just quickly erase all these pixels I don't want. Now I'm not going to be terribly terribly careful about this right now because you get the idea but in your in on your page you may want to go a little bit slower and be a little bit more careful. Let me come up here and delete all the way down to here. Okay, so now I've got my paper clip with the back half behind the photo as it needs to be. At least that's how it appears. But I do look like I have a little bit of a problem right here. I have the shadow that I had already applied is actually showing here. You can see this shadow is actually showing right here on my frame. And of course, um, it would be behind the frame, not showing on my frame. So to take care of that, I'm going to, with my paper clip uh, layer selected, right mouse click and choose Simplify. That means that the shadow is now part of my paper clip. And then back with my eraser tool, and you notice I still have the marching ants around my frame. I'm just going to come up here and erase that portion of the shadow. Now, if you wanted to be super realistic about it, um, we could add another shadow behind. Let me deselect, Control or Command D to deselect the marching ants. I can add a new layer and come over here to my brush tool again. And this time I'm going to get a soft round brush. Let's do this number 17, maybe make it a little bigger. Put the little shadow right about here, maybe. Oops. Soft round brush, we said. Need much bigger soft round brush. Here you go. Sorry about that. 
way too big. Maybe lower the opacity of this a little bit until it matches the other. And then I'm going to clip this shadow control or command. I'm sorry, Alt or Option, and then click in the space between the two layers to get this little square icon here. And now I've clipped that shadow um, to my layer. That's a little bit more realistic. Now the one other thing that I want to do is, if you notice in this layout over here, we come closer, if a paper clip was attached behind, there's going to be just a little bit of highlight here where the paper underneath is sort of pushing my frame up. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I'm on my um, frame layer because that's where the, the light would be, the, the paper clip would be pushing through. And I'm going to switch to my burn tool. Um, it's hidden underneath my dodge tool. So this is the dodge tool and um, the burn tool is here right below it. And I'm going to come and change this to shadows. Now you're going to have to experiment with this and remember this is destructive. I'm actually going to be painting these pixels onto this frame. So I'm just going to do this carefully and I think about 30% might work. I'm going to lightly brush here. You know that's not doing very much so maybe we'll switch to my dodge tool and the same thing maybe about 25 pixels and do the highlights and then just lightly stroke there that's a little bit better it's not a lot you don't need a lot of color here you're just trying to imply that it's pain it's pushing through and there you have it that's how you attach a digital paper clip to a piece of paper in photoshop elements i did want to point something else out to you though see these really cool shadows that i've got here um, on this frame here and this big one here and this really sort of nice deep shadows around these uh, butterflies here. I'm using a really cool action by Wendy Design here at Scrapbook Graphics. Let me just show you this. It's called the uh, Shadow Magic Pro and really what it does is it gives you some really cool warped shadows and put shadows on a separate layer so that you can manipulate them. And I just wanted to show you how this could really um, be a fun thing to play around with. These are some more elements from my Express Yourself Hope uh, bundle. And I'm just going to click on the flower layer to start with. Come over to my action, which I've got loaded. And I'm going to run the one on here that says flower. I'm just going to click on it and then say run. I'm going to get a uh, warning that it's going to put the layer, the shadow layer, on a separate layer. And that's what's really, really, really cool here because then you can muck with the shadow. Say continue. I get to choose a foreground color. In my case, I like my shadows to be a dark brown and not actually black. And I like that's a little more realistic for me. So I'm going to choose that color and say OK. And I also like my shadows to be a linear burn blend mode instead of multiply. So I'm going to say OK and let the do its work. I'm going to get this box here asking me how many of generators uh, that I want waves. You can play with this to your heart's content and get some really cool looking um, shadows. I'm just going to accept this default and say OK. And then let's come over to the layers panel here. And you can see I now have a separate layer that's my shadow. And I can move this anywhere I want to. And I can change the opacity of this and I can change the blend mode of this. So you see a lot more flexibility than just adding a shadow um, directly in using the effects panel. Let's try this frame here. I'm going to click on the frame layer and this time because the frame is made of paper, shadow wouldn't be too deep. I'm going to choose the paper action here and just say run warning again. Another warning about if you're using a template. We're not doing that so we're just going to say OK. I'm going to choose my shadow color and again I like this brown color and I'll come to linear burn and say OK. I'm going to accept the default and then look at this shadow. Isn't that cool? Let me show you how you can make this even more cool. I'm going to click on my shadow layer and I'm going to switch to my smudge tool, 
which is this little finger pointing tool here. And it should default to a brush. I'm using a really soft edge brushed and it's fairly large. This one's up to 200 pixels. I'm just going to come right on my shadow layer and watch this. I'm just going to gently tug out the shadow. I'm just gently pulling those pixels down a little tiny bit and down a little tiny bit here in this corner and then pushing them up here and I started out with a really cool shadow and I've customized it even further. Matter of fact, let's just do that just a tiny bit more. Pretty cool, huh? Let's do the tag and this time I'm also going to run the uh, paper action, I think, shadow action, but let's play with the generator, see what, what cool we can come up with. It's going to say OK and continue and let's just accept these defaults here and this time I, the default number of generators let's just make this up to 24. I don't know what we're going to get but let's just see what that looks like. Okay can you see this? So it makes my tag look like it's a little wrinkly and again it's on its own layer so I can reposition this down switch my move tool here reposition oops want my on my shadow layer. I can reposition this down over back over here. Come here. Oops. Cooperating co co right here. And then maybe change the opacity. And if you don't like it, if you do that, you say, hmm, that really didn't turn out the way I expected it to. That's okay. Just hide that layer or delete it and then run the action again. Accept the warnings. Let's go back to just a few more than the five. Let's just go here. Easy, isn't it? Okay, just for fun, let's just do one more. Let's come back to my butterfly layer. And the butterfly layer, the closest thing we have to a bulky kind of item like a butterfly would be, oops, would be the, um, let's do the flower one again. And continue. Accept these defaults, accept these defaults, and then look at that. Now I can play with this, move this further away, change the opacity to imply that it's uh, flying much higher up. Really cool, isn't it? So if you like to play with shadows, I suggest that you check out uh, Wendy's Action. Once again, that's the Shadow Magic Pro by Wendy's Eye at Scrapbook Graphics. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.